So I was on a call today with Linda from beyondthejournal.com and her affinity users group that she runs. And she was sharing how she's using the table tool as a unique way to create uh, different types of papers, different types of lines and dot grid and stuff. And I thought it was really quite clever. And by the end of the time she was talking, I could see how we could apply this to patterns, which is something that I've been a little bit obsessed with uh, over the last year or so. So let me show you what I've been playing around with using Affinity Publisher to create just a simple pattern tile. So I'm going to draw out a table with the table tool and extend it from corner to corner. And my document incidentally is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels with a transparent background. So I'm going to make this four by four. And then I'm going to drag this out. so that it fills the entire document. Now I should have exact squares here. So I've also got just a scratch document uh, open as well in another tab. And so here I'm going to place the image that I want to put in my pattern. And I'm using this one here. Now this is obviously way too big, so I'm going to scale it down here. So let's take a look at our cell size here. So I'm going to select a cell and go over to the table tool, which you can find up in this little icon here, or table show table. And I can see that a cell is 250 by 250 pixels. So in here, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. What I found is if I went exactly 250 by 250, there was enough overlap uh, in the table that it was distorting my table sizes and automatically bumping it bigger. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller than that. So on my image here with transform on, let's go to, uh, let's try 220 and we'll see if that works. So now I'm going to copy this, bring it back over to my table. And the other little setup thing I want to do is I'm going to click in this shaded area and hold while I drag down to select everything. And I'm just going to make the cursor absolutely centered in the box using the justification. So align center and then one over in the drop down center vertically as well. So I'm still on the table tool and I'm going to select a cell. I'm going to paste my picture in and I'm going to select every other one. Oops, that was wrong. This one. Okay, so there's the starts of it. Now let's just add one more thing to this. Let's add just a little dot. So I'm going to go over to my scratch pad again, um, my file that I have open in the next tab, grab the ellipse tool, and there's one of my earlier experiments. Let's just fill that with a solid color. Um, so what I did with this is I expanded out my image and I selected my shape, which let's go ahead and make this perfect. Um, so my cells again are, there. it's now converted it to millimeters, so 21 millimeters. So I think maybe about eight, that would be about the, a third of the size. So let's make this eight by eight. And then I just went into the color picker tool and sampled a color from here. So let's make sure this is selected, color picker, and picked a color. I liked one of the lighter ones that was sort of goldish looking, so Maybe that might be a little too light. Like that, I like that. Now I'm going to select this and copy it, bring it back to my table here, and then I'm going to fill in all my spots by just control V to paste. Let's get this guy out of the way. All 
right, so now we have a very basic pattern set up. And so let's export this as a PNG to maintain the transparent background. And while it does that, let's go back to our scratch pad here. And I'm going to draw out a rectangle to test this. So I'm going to, with this still selected, switch, the, switch to the fill tool over here. Context will be fill and type will be bitmap. And then we can go ahead and find this test pattern. And oops, we forgot to do one thing here. We forgot to turn off the cells. So let's go ahead and do that. Right here in the stroke and fill, I'm going to turn off this black border. All right, let's export this one more time. And just overwrite this one. And let's go ahead and give this another go. There we go. And so now, because I have this set to, um, to wrap, I can use this to fill any size shape with this pattern tile. I can rotate it, scale it up or down. And so I think that's a really cool way that you can use Publisher to create simple patterns.